Hey, what's up? I'm Austin Griffith. This is just a quick demo of the Burner Wallet. It's at xdai.io. It generates you a key pair on page load, and you're ready to just start sending uh, transactions. I've been testing it on all sorts of devices, just trying to make sure we get this thing solid and working on every device we can get it going on. Uh, we've got some new stuff with encrypted messaging, with exchanges, and with how private keys are used. So I just want to just jam through those real quick. So, uh, I mean, the main feature of of a burner wallet is this send button right here. If I hit send on my phone and I allow the camera and I point it at that QR code of someone else's phone and I type in maybe an amount of 10 cents and I hit send, then about five seconds later on the XDI network, those are the block times, we'll see uh, some 10 cents move into this wallet. Okay, so that's, that's like the main demo. So uh, let's actually uh, look at some uh, other ways to use uh, the burner wallet. So one thing is um, if you don't allow the camera, so I'm going to go ahead and block access to the camera. If you hit scan here, and that works like on this, this old phone is the same way. If I hit send, I'm going to get this same uh, message. Basically, it's a fallback. So if you don't happen to have uh, camera access, it's going to give you this nice little fallback, which uh, on uh, your phone, it will let you uh, take a picture, which is really cool. So you can still, even on old phones, just take a picture of a QR code and it will, uh, let's, let's try it here. Let's, uh, let me just take a screenshot of this, right? As if I was gonna take a picture and then we'll say, hey, let's take a picture and then I'll grab that. Uh, file and then yeah it'll load in and take me to send to that guy oh I don't have any money so I can't send anyways good demo okay so anyways basically you can take a photo with old phones uh, so there is a fallback so basically every phone now as long as it can load the burner should be able to shoot and send uh, funds so uh, let's dig into this a little bit more um, so another way you can send is just by sending to an address. Obviously I can just paste this in and send. Now watch this. If I try to send all 10 cents, hopefully it'll complain. It didn't complain. Maybe I had enough. I'm assuming that that's not going to work because, oh, so there were gas fees. I don't know. How did that work? It was magical. I must have sent a little bit more. Maybe, oh, this, this wallet must have had a little bit left over. Because normally if you were to try to ten, send 10 cents and you had 10 cents, anyways, gas fees. Uh, so there's a nice little history now, and you can even click into the history and follow the history. Um, but now that this key is done, I, I've moved all the key uh, management stuff down to the advanced section. If we get into that, we can see that I've got the burn and copy here. So I could copy the private key if I want, but let's go ahead and burn it. Yes, we want to burn it. There's a nice little dialogue now. It lets you know that you're about to trash it. Uh, before it wouldn't let you burn it if you add more than 10 cents, but I found that I did need to burn keys and move them around So it'll let you burn money if you need to assuming that you have that key pair backed up somewhere So speaking of that you can just paste in a private key and it will bring that account back, right? Uh, or uh, what you can do is type in a seed phrase. So uh, This will accept basically any seed phrase. It's it's going through the same algorithm of bringing the seed phrase in But it's not uh, particular about your seed phrase so you can just type something in here, which is really cool. I've typed a few things in and actually found funds, which is, you know, you're not supposed to do that, but that's just people not. Uh, but if I type in, I have one set up. So if I say the king is dead, long live the king. Just something that like you could remember. Obviously this isn't very good because someone else could probably remember this pretty easily. Also like when I type in a phrase that is common and I find funds behind it. But, but you want to come up with a phrase that no one else knows, a nice long phrase that no one else is going to come up with, and then you could create a burner wallet, and you probably shouldn't use this for very long, obviously, because someone else could type in that phrase, and if they were, I mean, if it's not a good enough phrase, they could take your funds, right? So basically, here we go. I've got this, and I think I have a little bit of money in here. Yeah, I have one die behind this. So anybody seen this video could probably get in and, um, and snag a dollar. Good luck, go get it. But uh, that's how private key loading works. So uh, now I guess we should jump over to the exchange. So the exchange works whether whether you have MetaMask injected or not, the exchange uh, is going to work. So I could take that, uh, I could take this 10 cents that I have laying over here and I could go to the exchange and I could move that 10 cents out uh, to die 
And then I could move that to ETH and the reverse, just use the arrows going the other direction. Uh, or, or I could send that die out to someone or send that ETH out to someone, right? So this acts kind of like an ETH wallet or a die wallet, and we'll probably add some other tokens in there as we need to. Uh, hit me up on Twitter if you have a specific uh, need or issue with a burner wallet. We're even skinning it for a couple different things, like different purposes, uh, like the, the cypherpunk speakeasy thing where we got people together and used the wallet to buy a beer to do user testing behind how the burner wallet works. We'll probably just kind of skin a whole wallet for a, an event, right? It's just switching out a few things. Uh, what is next? So we've got private keys, we've got the cool seed phrase stuff, we've got sending. Uh, I, I, obviously you can send with a link. I don't know, uh, might as well just show that here. So if you, oh, that was cool. So this goes to Block Scout, by the way. So you can see uh, it's basically like Ether scan, but for XDAI. And it also does mainnet. Uh, so uh, if I want to send with a link, I can just send like five cents in here and hit send, and that puts it into an escrow contract. It creates another, like an ephemeral private key, and then that private key is used to pass along. So someone could scan this, and this is cool. So uh, this is another new feature, is you can seed a device with a private key. So what you could do is take a private key, you could fill it up with a little bit of ETH, a little bit of DAI, whatever you need, and you could just hand it to someone, uh, just kind of like, here you go, here's a private key, right? And then they could take that private key and shoot it with, with a blank uh, burner wallet, and it would seed in, and actually that wallet would now be ready to go, right? So not only can you just paste in a private key, but you could actually shoot a QR code of a private key, and it will just make a burner wallet out of it. So uh, let's see. We have this link, and I could just click it to copy it. I could send it in a text message. So, so I could generate this, send it in a text message on my phone, or I can just send it in an email, or I can shoot it with a QR code. But no matter what, once it gets to this other side, this guy should be able to go claim that. Now, if this guy has funds, he's gonna spend the gas to claim the funds, but if he doesn't have funds, there's a relayer network. So you'll send the claim to the relay network and the relay network will claim it for you and they'll pay the gas. And right now I'm paying for all that. Please don't attack it. But if you attack it, I'll have to figure out a better way to do it. Uh, so there's that. All right, so the next two uh, big things are the exchange, obviously, and we've kind of ran through that, and uh, messaging. So messaging is really neat. Uh, so I, I've always seen that, like, so Ethereum private keys, public-private keys, are, uh, you could do it asymmetric cryptography with them, right? Like, I, I was like, well, wait a minute. Why? So say someone sends you money and you want to send them a private message back. How do you go about doing that? And so the, the best case I could come up with is, well, you could send them a transaction back, and in the data of the transaction, you could put a little message, but then everyone could read that message. So what if you sent them a transaction, and inside the data field, you encrypted the message with their public key, so they get a transaction, and the only thing that can read the transaction is their private key. So the one thing I learned from that is it, you're, you're not using Ethereum addresses to encrypt, you're using the public key. And the public key is actually a hash, or the address is actually a hash of the public key. So there's no way to know the public key given someone's address. So what you have to do is do this really neat trick where you can get their public key by uh, looking at the RS and V of a transaction. So say they've already created a transaction. So what I did was, th there was a, there's probably a lot better ways to do this, but what I came up with is if, if one wallet um, sends a message to another wallet. So there's like basically a history between uh, the two. So let's say, uh, let's just go ahead and have this dude send to this dude, right? We'll, we'll, we'll say these are the two phones that are out in the wild. And one phone is going to just send a message to the other phone. Okay, we got that nice and cleaned up. Let's even get this guy out of here. Okay, so let's say, let's say this dude, um, the dude on the left just scans the dude on the right's code and he says, um, you know, I'm gonna send you a penny or whatever, or, or they're talking. You can even send the message here, right? I could say, hello world, right? Now this is going to go on chain and it's going to be unencrypted. So everyone in the world could read that hello world message, right? But if you look here, when someone sends you a message, there's a little, so here is your, your transaction history or like the last 12 or something like that. 
but there's like this little chat bubble that's like, hey, there's there's more to this transaction, and you can click in here and see that there's like this history, right? There's this history between purple guy and red guy. So purple guy has three cents, red guy has six cents, and purple guy sent him hello world, but also sent a little value along with it, right? So uh, watch this. So let's say purple guy then, he's like, oh, I wanna kinda initiate some kind of chat with this dude, so I'm gonna wave at him, right? So let's say purple guy waves at red guy, and then, oh, red guy's like, oh, he's waving at me. Oh, look, it's already gone encrypted. I can wave back at him. Now the two waves, so it's looking for a wave, like a colon, colon, wave, uh, like emoji. And if you wave at someone, then it sets up an encrypted channel. So now our chat is encrypted, and I can say, hello, I think this is private, but I'm not a cryptography or spelling. expert and I think that uh, on Twitter when I asked about this it's pr sort of discouraged to use your key for both signing transactions and encrypting stuff so you should be careful with it I think that it just uh, kind of gives you a little bit more surface but the point of this is to put it on chain what I should really do is put a message on chain that is a private key to like a hundred bucks and just see if anybody it's probably not worth a hundred bucks but let's just say that, I mean, that's kind of what, why the burner is cool, right? Like we're keeping private keys in local storage because we're using just a small amount of cash and we're moving it around in a way that's like, like cash, where if it's in your pocket, you could lose it. Anyways, it, it you know, don't move so much money through a burner wallet with the private key in local storage that you aren't, you know, you can't afford to lose, right? Okay, so we've got encrypted chat. We've got the new exchange. We've got a new way to move private keys in and out. You can put in your own uh, key pair. You can paste in a private key. You can scan in a private key. Um, you can send with a link. You can send by scanning. Uh, oh, let's let's send an encrypted chat. Let's send an encrypted chat. Hello, purple dude. And let's actually send five cents along with this chat. So you can also send the guy money with the message. Pretty cool. So that'll take, should take about five seconds. There we go. So purple dude's like, oh, red guy sent me five cents and I can say thanks to that. Cool. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you for checking it out. Uh, this is all about Ethereum and emerging markets and making uh, this really accessible. So any old phone can just scan this code or visit xdai.io and just have a wallet ready to go and be able to move funds quickly. And then uh, when you get home, you want to have like a cold account where you have MetaMask where you can, it's cold, right? Compared to the burner wallet, a cold account. You, you, you t come home with, with a little bit of cash on your phone. You shoot it into another XDAI that uh, has MetaMask behind it where your private keys are stored in a little bit safer way. And you move it over there and you burn your, your, your mobile private key or you can just run it to the exchange right so you could go here you could go exchange and you could move that x die one penny but you could move that x die out to die or to eth and then uh to an exchange or uh just send that eth along to some other address all right thanks for checking it out happy bow tie friday check out the burner wallet uh let's keep building